Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us for another edition of our virtual Heritage Will Not Meetings. Uh, welcome to those viewing online, either live now or afterwards too. I'd like to start off with our territorial acknowledgement, which I will share with the group. We've gathered virtually in Wilmot Township on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Mississauga peoples. We I also want bigger and I lost my We also want to acknowledge the importance of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant, a peace agreement made between Indigenous nations before the Europeans arrived. It characterizes our collective responsibility to each other and Mother Earth. We should take only what we need, leave enough for others, and keep the dish clean. By acknowledging this covenant and the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, we're reminded of our important connection to this land where we live, learn, and work together as a community. Uh, next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. Tonight, I actually have a perceived indirect conflict related to the Baden Mill property. I forwarded the applicable information to the clerk uh, for that item. Then accordingly, when we get to that part of the agenda, I'll pass the chair over to Marg as vice chair. Any other mem members have a pecuniary interest to disclose? Seeing none. Uh, we can move on to item four, which is review of the minutes from the January 19th meeting. Any uh, comments, questions, omissions, additions? If not, could I have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, Ren, second, Jen. All in favor? That is carried, thank you. Okay, moving on to business. The first item under business is the water lot. Uh, update on the application to the Waterloo Region Heritage Foundation. Tracy, would you like to update the committee on this part? Um, certainly. So the application from the property owner of the water lot, um, they heard back from the Waterloo Regional Heritage Foundation and unfortunately their application was declined. And when I asked why the, the Heritage Foundation is taking a pause um, for funding at this point. So um, she's going to keep in touch with us uh, if there's any new developments um, with that. And so, and unfortunately it is uh, at a standstill right now. That is unfortunate. Um, yeah, hopefully they get the, the funding sorted soon. Um, How much were they looking for? I can't recall the amount total. Uh, I, I know it did cover a lot of the work. There was uh, the work that they had applied to us for, and then there was other work that they were looking to do as well. So they, I think, just put everything in to see what they would get funding for. Okay. Uh, Patty? Oh, Patty, you're, you're muted. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, there we go. It, it really was a, a large application, Ren, so, um, yeah. It... Hmm. Okay. Okay, so, um, Tracy, I suppose if they were to apply again or have it considered again, the letter that we had would, would, still, be, would still be used, and then I guess they'd come back to us if there was anything else they needed at, at exactly. this time. Exactly. I think what would happen is once the Heritage Foundation reaches out to them again, they may need to alter their application. Um, the letter of support from Heritage Wilmot was specific on what we were um, supporting on specific repairs. So it might be just a matter of um, tweaking the application again and resubmitting it, which um, we will wait and see and provide whatever support we can. Okay, sounds good. Uh, if there's nothing else on that item, we'll move on to the next item under business, which is the Betch and Hallman Ryer House, 1522 Bethel Road. Uh, so it was an update regarding the wood trim and gingerbread repairs. And um, the applicant, uh, Karen Doan, is here as well. If we have any uh, questions or anything we needed to, to bring her into the meeting for. Uh, I'll, I'll start with a bit of an overview. And then uh, Tracy, Patty, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add after. Um, 
But just a bit of a summary. So the, our uh, January meeting, Heritage Wilmot supported the repairs and the painting of the wood trim and the gingerbread details on the home, uh, as well as we provided a letter of support for funding to the Waterloo Region Heritage Foundation. So since the meeting, Tracy, Patty, and I have uh, been uh, continue to be in touch with the property owner as the project details have been finalized. Uh, the owner had went to visit uh, Hoffmeyer Mill in Sebringville to inquire about having replicas made of some of the broken sections of the gingerbread and was informed that they could actually create replicas by tracing the original sections of the trim so they could make a very good copy of the, the trim sections, which is great news. The mill, they recommended that the owner consider having additional sections created so that um, because there's other sections that are broken and that would allow them to create, um, to repair all the gingerbread at once. And uh, the mill viewed that as a good long-term solution to the, to the trim on the property. So the property owner would like to have Heritage Beaumont consider the revised proposal that would see them replace the, all the gingerbread on the property with, uh, it's called a Koya wood. And it's, a, it's a, a pine, I can't recall, or a softwood at least, I can't recall which one, uh, but it's, uh, it's been treated in some way that makes it, uh, makes it very durable and weather resistant. And I, I know Tracy is looking at using that on some parts of the, the castle. So they would use that for the gingerbread pieces and then repair or repaint the uh, remaining wood on there. So the, the soffit, uh, fascia, the, the frias and the drops. And then there's a bit of repair, repair required to some of the uh, support posts for the drops. There, there's a bit of, of rot there and those would be done as required. And the owner, they're also considering uh, applying for the to the Heritage Foundation again if funding opens up. So they'd appreciate a letter of support uh, for that aspect too, in case they happen to go down that route. And uh, as I mentioned, the property owners here, if uh, we have any questions for them, uh, Tracy or, or Patty, was there anything else that you wanted to, to add? Well, I, <clears throat> I did send, I think I copied everyone in on an email a few days ago, maybe. Um, and I, Stephen and I went out, we were returned, we had some actual pieces that had been through, that Tracy saw at the township. And then, then they were here and I had a good look at them and then we took them back. And um, so we had a really good look at it and, and I don't know if you've all looked at the photographs today that have come through from Nick, but um, it's pretty far gone, that, that trim, uh, in, in my opinion. And <laughs> um, there's not much. I think that she would like permission to, you know, I, I, I think that it can't be held together with paint um, at some point. There's just a, there's just a, lot, of, a lot of places it's broken. So, and I'll, I'll bring up the, the photos as well that you, uh, you. Yeah. that were sent around earlier today and that uh, Karen had sent, which are, are great. Um, just one second. There we go. So, this is uh, the property owner's kindly put uh, captions up here for us too. So there was one of the drops that had, um, it was barely hanging on to the house. So it's uh, since been removed, so it doesn't get damaged any further. Uh, so this is uh, one of the photos of it. And then um, I'll just zoom in a little bit here. So you can, you can see rotten pieces at the top. And then this is the, the trim around the edges that were discussed previously to, to repair. And then I think that's maybe a better view. And then you can just see some of the, the cracking and things like that. That one's got a little piece that looks like it was broke off at some point in the past. And then these are, this is the, the one piece that had uh, come off. There is one section of the pattern. And uh, we looked at some similar to this uh, from the photos I took when I was out there too. But just a bit more, you can see some of the, 
the deep cracks in the some of the trim. And there's a picture just showing the front of the house. The quality on that one's not great, but you can still get the idea. So um, I also have a photo of the front of the house. I'll just put that up quickly just so everyone has context there. And then uh, you can see this is the, the, the piece that was just hanging on a bit. So that's the one that we were just looking at close up pictures of. Uh, so I th think I'll just open it up to the, the floor. If anyone had any, any questions. Um, don't know if we should have the, uh, the property owner come in as well. I don't know if there's anything else that they wanted to add. <clears throat> There's a lot of work to be done. Are these people? Are these people in Saint? In Saint is it Saint Mary's or are they expensive? You mean the uh, the main Seabrook Hill Villa? Exactly. The mill? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were they were really helpful. I think when when Karen went to see them and uh, and, and took a lot of interest in the project. Um, and I think they had a good, you know, they seemed to have a good handle on on what needed to be done, um, and weren't and weren't afraid to, you know, to tackle it. Now, does this gingerbread go around the entire house or just at the front? Three sides. Three sides. Yeah, and um, I'm not sure if there's any on the north side or not, but there's, you know, it's it's fully. Um, it has. This is a house with a front gable and two end gables, so we've got three. The, the east side is uh, is the worst as far as the gingerbread goes, but but the south, which we just saw, also a lot of damage and then or of uh, degradation really, and then the uh, west side actually has the least, but still uh, quite a few spots where the, where there are, are breaks in it. Um, it's I expect been there from from uh, from eighteen ninety. Uh, so, and it's very exposed, so it's not hard to imagine that, uh, that it may have, you know, reached the end of its life, useful life, really, it seems like. Well. Yeah, the, um, when the house was designated, uh, some of the material was, and this, I forget what exact designation date was, but it's quite some time ago, some of the material was already in need of, of work then. So I, you know, I can imagine what it, what it looks like now. Um, and I think we should in, encourage the property owners since they've gone to Hoffmeyer's and they are, from what I gather, one of the best mills in the province. And uh, restoration is, is one thing, but when the damage is as bad as this is, it's just not, it's not possible. So the, the fact that they're willing to get the materials replicated, I think is, is, is very noteworthy. And I, I definitely support uh, what they're doing by going to Hoffmeyer's and getting the, the trim and stuff recreated. I think that's the really only solution at this point. Thanks so. Al. Yeah, um, we've used Hoffmeyer's on our house as well. Um, they've uh, rebuilt some of the parts of our porch, uh, the spindles and the main posts and yeah, they do great work. Hello, Karen. Uh, was there anything else that you, you wanted to add or did anyone have any specific questions for the property owners? No, you're, you're not me. Okay. If this, there's no questions, uh, Karen, so I, you probably heard the overview that we gave. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to, to add that you thought we should know? Well, um, I just, 
however you word things, if you could leave leeway there, because until you get there, you don't know how much damage is at the other post and stuff. I, I don't like all this running back and forth that needs to be done. Uh, like, and I don't, I want to save you the, uh, going through that process all the time too. And it really holds me up and moving along. So until they actually get up there with the lift, I don't know how much rotten wood they're going to run into in different areas. I have a feeling there's rotten wood surrounding where that post came down, like the, where I removed the drop. Mm -hmm. So however you word things, if you could just please give me some leeway for okay. what they find when they actually get up there. If there's, if there's other repairs or things that need to be done, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm really um, interested, like I never knew about a coil wood before. So I've been really uh, kind of, it's moved me on to looking at the wood replacement in a new way when I hear about how long this wood will last and how well it takes to paint. Because every time um, somebody gets up there, it's not like a 10 foot high porch that you can get up there and touch up easily. You need to rent a lift every time you go up to touch up on this gingerbread because of the height involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the Akoya wood was, was new for me too. I hadn't heard of it before. and. Uh... I know Tracy's going to be using it on parts of the castle, but it seems like a very good product and very durable. So it'll be interesting to see how, I guess, how it all works out and how it's install goes and things like that. Did uh, anyone else have any comments, questions, either for the property owner or otherwise? Also welcome, Alicia. Uh, if there's nothing else, then I guess uh, we'd be looking for a uh, motion to, uh, as, well, as I mentioned, they're looking to replace the gingerbread with the uh, clay wood and then do the repairs uh, and paint and scrape as required to the other trim. So a um, motion from the committee to support uh, replicating the trim that's on the, the house now and do the repairs. Jen and second Patty. Great. Uh, any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Oh, sorry. That's carried. Sorry, Jen, was you were trying to point something? Yvonne? Marg, Marg had looked like she wanted to say something, but she was muted. Oh, okay. Mark says no. All right. Well, that was carried. Uh, so Karen will write a, a letter from the committee. So you've got a, a formal record. And uh, as mentioned, we'll make sure that it's, it's clear that if there's other repairs needed, that there's some provision for that. And uh, you're, you're all set. Okay, thank you. Great. Thanks very much for coming tonight too. All right, I just need to change my screen around here now. Okay, so next item we had was the 2022 work plan for Heritage Beaumont. So Tracy put together a uh, work plan document based on the things that we discussed previously. Thanks again, Tracy, for putting that together. Uh, it's a lot of random thoughts to put together into something coherent, so that's good. Uh, Tracy, was there anything that you wanted to mention about the work plan or anyone else for that matter? I can uh, just um, reiterate it, although it looks a little bit daunting, this is everything the committee has um, talked about or is involved in, things that we are currently in progress, things we talked about. So it kind of um, gives us a direction moving forward as well and reminders so we don't lose these, um, these items that we're working on. And 
wanted everyone to know that um, it can always change as well on um, some aspects of it, some things that we definitely are committed to, but if there's new things to add, absolutely. <laughs> if you'd like to add more, um, uh, that's something we can discuss, but at least we have it all in a document that we can now follow. Thanks, Tracy. So um, I think what would be good is if we had uh, support from the committee for the, I guess the work plan as a draft, and then we can continue to poke away at it. And uh, Tracy mentioned starting to kind of assign like timing or priority or things like that. So we can kind of use it as a working document as we go through the year. And I'm sure a bunch of stuff will flow over to next year. Uh, Cause I know some of the stuff was longer term anyway. So, uh, yeah. Any uh, any comments, anybody? Thanks, Tracy. It's a good list to, to to look forward to. It is. The intention was to inspire, not to scare people away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm grateful that you put it all into a document for us because I know we had a really uh, good discussion and then, you know, we get on to other things off of this call and. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And the, uh, the nice thing is, as Nick mentioned um, on assigning dates that I could come back again with um, things that we need to have start the conversation drafts need to be done by so then it's. Uh, especially like when it's, you know, uh, like a heritage week or um, things in the summer we want to do that we can actually start working ahead and, and have gentle reminders of when we need to start. <laughs> All right. Um, we have a motion then to support the draft work plan. Patty, second Al, so second hand I saw. Any other comments, questions? Seeing none. All in favor? All right, that is carried. Uh, next item I put on just quick update on the non-designated register uh, photo update. Uh, I just put it on to see if there's any update from the subcommittee taking photos, Jen. So uh, Yvonne and I have been uh, trying to schedule ourselves time, but between the weather and uh, various things that have come up. We've bumped it again because, uh, well, it was melted and it was looking great. Like, okay, we can take pictures. And then it snowed again. And we had good intentions. Snowed again. I, can I can second that we had good intentions and then it decided to snow. So. Uh, Perfect. So it's, it, it, we've, we have not canceled it. We've moved it in the calendar to when we think it might be not snowy. Okay, that's perfect. Um, and then, Mark, there was a property you wanted to add to, right? It was the one schoolhouse on Sand Hills, I think you said? Yes, it is uh, 3812 Sand Hills, the Schmidt School. It's no, the yellow brick construction of the old school don't, no longer shows as yellow brick. He's put white stucco all over Go it ahead. to match the new addition. So that photo needs to be redone. And also, the uh, 3250 Herbs Road at the corner in Phillipsburg, the white place, the windows have changed. So that's no longer an up-to-date photo either. Those are the only two that I can think of right off hand. Excellent. Thanks, Mom. Just jotting these down. Yeah, so I can, Nick, if you'd like, I can add those two to that master list and I can okay. recirculate again. So we have the current document. Perfect. <laughs> Chance like, yeah, <laughs> no problem. Is and if you can other... also tell us when it's going to stop snowing so we can actually schedule out and get this, that would I be know. helpful too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tomorrow and Thursday look good. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Sunny, warm weather. Is there any other photos like the Silcox house that needs to be photographed in the winter time? That might already be on the list. There's a couple designated that we need updated. On the yeah. List. yeah, I'll it, recirculate. It, Once I add these two, I can circulate it. We can take uh, a look. It's just it. because in the summertime, you can't see some of those properties. Mm. No, that's true. So. If, if we... Um, so 
if we get out just after the snow is melted, then that won't be an issue. That's I, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, think... what, that's what I was, um, why we were hoping to get out. Well, yeah. As soon as the snow melts. <laughs> Between now and like end of May would be, yeah. would be perfect. I think. <laughs> Yep. Okay, that's great. I uh, think we can move on then to the final committee meeting dates. So we sent the list around uh, It was done previously. I sent that around the other day too. Um, anyone have any thoughts, comments on the dates? Nope. If not, I think we need just a motion to approve that as our official meeting dates for the year. Mark, second Barry, tied with Al, I think. <laughs> uh, all in favor? All right, that's carried. Uh, last item under business was the Heritage Week recap. Uh, Tracy, I think you had a bit of an update. You were gonna provide the committee on that? Sure. So from February 21st to 27th, celebrated across Ontario and across Canada was Heritage Week. And um, the work that the committee did, which thank you to everyone that helped on prepare articles or even to bravely take selfies of themselves <laughs> that we could post. We had a really good social media campaign um, where we had uh, information posted in uh, on the uh, Castle Facebook page, on the Township of Wilmot Twitter account as well. And there's lots of retweets and likes, which was nice to see. And with the, um, the selfie picture, I think it was nice to add a little personality to the committee. So maybe next year we'll get more members uh, selecting heritage places and taking a photo. But it was uh, I had lots of positive feedback about that. Uh, we also had uh, printed articles in the New Hamburg Independent, uh, the Baden Outlook, and the Wilmot Tavistock Gazette. Um, and then also uh, from the engagement piece, there was the How Well Do You Know Wilmot quiz, um, which I thought was a um, nice incorporation from something the committee did back in 2000. I think it was the 150th. Um, and then for focusing on Castle Kilbride, but is a part of Heritage as well, was True and False. So I think people enjoyed that. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, you can go to the Heritage Wilmot website. Um, we still have it posted, but um, it's kind of nice to test your knowledge. Um, multiple choice, and then there's a true and false. But considering we couldn't um, uh, host a in-person Heritage Day that we are known for, <laughs> it was at least nice we can do a little bit of engagement and hopefully for February of 2023, we'll be back doing to what we all do really well and host a really good Heritage Day. Hopefully. <laughs> I know we said that last year too. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, no, it, I, I really liked all the, the things that were done. The, the social media stuff was fun. And I, I think I mentioned that before that there's like the article in the paper. It, I think it came out really nice. And uh, they did a, a nice job on the, the layout and uh, content and things like that. And it was nice to have the, like you mentioned, Tracy, the selfies and then the quiz and the, the Castle Cobard stuff. So I think it was a good, uh, you know, good variety of things that were available too. We should try doing like a, a quiz or something like that. If we uh, like for we have the, uh, the in-person one or like, a, I don't know, a scavenger hunt or something like that. Just kind of something fun to get people circulating around the room. I think that would be neat. Do I sense you want to add to the work program? I think that might be an item <laughs> to add to the work program. <laughs> Okay. Nick has just volunteered to create a Heritage, scavenger hunt. Yeah. Heritage Week Thanks, scavenger Nick. hunt. And a scavenger yes. hunt, was it? Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Nick. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Anything else on Heritage Week, anybody? Don't see any hands. All right. Um, brings us to a new business. So the first item under there, only item, is the Baden Mill. Uh, so it's noted I have a conflict for this item, so I will vacate the chair seat uh, for the discussion and then pass it over to Mark as vice chair to discuss and ask for comment. And then once complete, uh, Mark, if you could pass the chair position back to me, then that would be great. Okay. So I'm... I will mute myself and turn off my microphone and uh, you can let me know when you guys are done. That'd be great. Thanks. Okay, Tracy's going to share, do a share screen and we'll look at some um, 
photos about the Baden Mill. Go ahead, Tracy. Oh, sorry, the uh, the PowerPoint that you see in front of you, I'm actually, um, right. uh, IT is controlling it. I, I'm not too oh, sure this oh, evening. I see. But the, uh, this PowerPoint was the original one that was presented um, in 2015 when the Livingston um, Mill property was added. So it'd be nice uh, a refresher on um, why it was selected and what a heritage register was. So Marg, this would be, um, if you want, if I, can, I can review it if you like, or if you'd like to, um, oh, yeah. to go over it on, oh, yeah. on what it means. Go means. ahead. Okay. That'll be fine. Thank you. Okay. So the Heritage Register, um, it's an official list of properties identified by the Heritage Wilmot Committee. Um, there are certain properties that are selected that they would go through an evaluation process to see if they fit a, a certain criteria. And um, these properties would become what we call non-designated. So it doesn't mean they're designated, just simply uh, uh, would have cultural heritage value or interest. And it creates this list in this section you see in green is just a sample of um, uh, of what it would look like. The document today, if you were to go on the Heritage Wilmot website, you can um, look where it says designated properties and the non-designated. I think we are sitting at close to 100 properties um, for Wilmot Township now. So it's quite an impressive um, uh, register that the Heritage Wilmot uh, Committee has put together. Next slide, Carl. Uh, the reason why properties are put on the register by this committee uh, recognizes that it has cultural value. Um, it demonstrates uh, once council approves it that um, they support conserving cultural heritage resource, promotes our understanding um, and enhances our knowledge of women's cultural heritage and provides easy accessible information about the cultural heritage. And uh, last, it's also a planning document that can be consulted and, and used when uh, we are reviewing development pro uh, proposals or permits. Next slide. Uh, with non-designated properties, while they are not designated, so uh, the designated ones you would you would notice have the uh, um, brass um, plaque. Um, Castle Kilbride would have one out front, and there's about maybe 17 in Wilmot that are designated. But these non-designated ones are not officially designated, but they are considered historic importance or value to the township of Wilmot. Very similar to designated. Next slide. The Ontario Heritage Act, uh, this is what uh, Heritage Wilmot follows for many of their decisions and actions. And so under the Ontario Heritage Act, the Heritage Wilmot is required, uh, the municipality, through their Heritage Committee to have a Heritage Register of Designated Properties. So that's a great big long list um, that we have created. Um, it also allows us to um, include, so the list would have ones that are not um, designated, has the value. And also these properties are on this list because it will tell us um, that they have significance or they're important and additional uh, review should a demolition permit be proposed, per, be proposed um, that uh, additional conversation or a study might be um, needed. Next slide. All right, Mark, do you want to take it over from here? Uh, this yes. is the property that the committee um, will be discussing for tonight. But I just like to give an uh, overview on how we got to where we are. Right, thank you. This is a picture, of course, of the Livingston Flax Mill and the uh, property in question are the silos here over on the right-hand side of the picture, right there. Mm -hmm. This is a very important industrial complex. It has a great deal of cultural heritage. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Importance. That's the word, <laughs> thank you. And so, and it's visible from a number of places in Baden and Baden is noted for, of course, the Livingston Flax Mill and its connection to Castle Kilbride. And uh, although this, the earliest part of the mill, of course, is back to the 1870s and I'm not 100% certain of the date of the construction of the silos, but there's a grouping there and so it does become an important industrial site. Mark, sorry to interrupt. I'm just going to ask um, uh, Carl if you could just move the next slide. There's just need to say next slide, and then okay. magically, magically we can. <laughs> okay. This is an old photo 
of the complex and the mill pond and some of the buildings like this. Oh, let's see. The one with the gable roof. I don't know if you can see my arrow or not, but you may not be able to. But yes, that this one here. And uh, it's no longer visible in that form. But it certainly is uh, a wonderful complex in Baden. And Baden was famous for its linseed oil, Livingston. Next slide, please. There you go, an advertising. Oil cakes and meal, flax and tow, and uh, the complex is visible there. Next slide. More advertising for the Baden Livingston Mill and the Baden and the Livingston brand. Dominion Linseed Oil Company became famous all over Canada and other parts of the world and. It's a very good product. Next slide, please. There you see the silos. Next slide. This is a map of the Baden Linseed Oil Works. Charles Street, you see in the middle. And then Mill Street. And what we're talking about is just behind the office, which is the corner of Charles and Mill and on the right hand side. Next slide, please. That's from the back. That's the original oil tank, circa 1900. You wouldn't see that from Charles Street, you have to go in behind. Next slide, please. The circle is the location of the uh, structures under question, the, the silos. And the next slide is a, is a uh, closer view. So that's what we're discussing that complex right there. And that's proposed for demolition. And the next slide. There you are, closer view yet. The next slide. And the next one. Is that the end of our slides, Tracy? Yes, right. okay. I believe there's a presentation by the Director of Development Services. Thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, I'm here to uh, provide um, an overview as well. Um, some of the information um, is probably duplicating uh, what, what you've uh, just presented. But um, so the, the first slide shows uh, the context of the property. So within the heritage registry, it's listed as, as one grouping of, of what is actually three properties. Um, so what's outlined in blue is, is sort of what I would call the main complex of buildings um, with an address of 75 Charles Street. I believe it's currently owned uh, by PV. PV Mart, formerly TSC. Uh, the green would be the old, what I would call the master feed store um, that fronts onto Mill Street with an address of 76 mil. And then the property that's um, before you tonight for consideration is uh, shown in yellow. It does not have a street address within our, our system, but um, the uh, complex of silos along Charles Street um, are part of the overall registry entry. And so for that reason, um, uh, being on the registry in accordance with the Ontario Heritage Act triggers a 60 day um, pause, if you will, or a delay that provides a municipality that's included a property on the registry with an opportunity to decide if, if there is a uh, value in proceeding to uh, designate the property under the Ontario Heritage Act. So um, that clock starts when the demolition permit is applied for. And that's why immediately 
um, we forward that uh, information then to uh, Heritage Committee for comment. Um, as Tracy mentioned, your the registry has um, a significant number of properties. Um, in order to ensure that we don't miss anything um, in the building section, um, all of those uh, registry entries are tagged to the property file system so that it, as soon as an application is made, um, whether it's for a development application or for a building code application, um, as soon as they open the property file, it will tag them to know that uh, the property is identified on the registry or otherwise designated um, in order to uh, ensure that the Ontario Heritage Act provisions are followed. Next slide, please. Uh, I, it looks like exactly the same place that whoever took the photos for your presentation, Mark, maybe Andrew did them all. I don't know, but, uh, so Andrew is out taking some pictures. This one obviously is, is recently with the snow on the ground. Um, and as your picture showed, um, of all the complex, the only area that's under discussion right now is, uh, what was shown in yellow on the previous slide, but, um, the complex there, yeah. Whose ever hand that is, I don't know if that's Tracy's or Carl's, but um, that is the area that the demolition permit has been applied for. Next slide, please. Uh, so to give you some basic uh, information on this, the owner is West Ag Resources Inc, uh, who purchased um, the this portion of the property for Master Feeds in 2014. It's about 1.8 acres, and its present zoning is Zone 10 Industrial. Um, the property and and a large a uh, portion of, of that area of Baden is identified within our official plan as being an urban growth center. Um, and that stems from the regional official plan in 2015, um, which required the municipality to identify where um, higher order density and mixed use development would grow in the future. Um, typically people would have expected that that would be New Hamburg's core. Um, one of the issues in New Hamburg's core, well, there's two issues, um, but the main one is that it's all for the most part, floodplain, and so not not necessarily the uh, focus for higher density growth, um, and also because Baden doesn't have um, well, it has a traditional core. It's it's not a um, as developed core, and so it was an opportunity to provide outside of a floodplain higher density growth and and a target for uh, those features. So um, this slide identifies that official plan talks about that it will be the focus for social, economic, cultural activities in the township. Certainly there's a lot of heritage resources and cultural resources in this area, not only with the Livingston property, but also Livingston Presbyterian Church um, with St. James Lutheran Church, which is designated under part four in a Butts' property and also the Miller House, which um, you will recall, um, I don't know what year, um, but it's it's to the, to the west of this where um, the township facilitated the severance of that property to and hopefully ensure its preservation in the long term. Um, these lands, along with the rest of the urban growth center, um, are planned, uh, identified in the 10-year capital plan that there would be a secondary planning exercise, a Baden Urban Growth Center study that would be completed upon the completion of the region's municipal comprehensive review. And that comprehensive review is ongoing right now. One of the components of the provincial policy statement and the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe is that the conversion of employment lands to residential uses, in this case, mixed use, uh, residential and, and main floor commercial, uh, cannot occur until the completion of a municipal comprehensive review. Um, so the process is moving forward with the region and as part of that, um, it's uh, got to the stage where they have identified that these lands uh, may convert from wholly being employment use um, to other uses. And so that is, is what has triggered um, the beginning of, of development um, plans in the area. Uh, similarly, Hink Street in New Hamburg, 66 Hink Street. Um, some of you may recall there was an application that has begun uh, to convert that industrial property to residential development as well. And that property was also um, one of the ones under consideration in the Municipal Comprehensive Review for conversion from employment um, to higher order residential. So as I indicated, um, I believe it's listed for 2023 in the 10-year capital plan. Uh, it had been listed in 2022, but because the region's Municipal Comprehensive Review has, has experienced some delays. Uh, it would not be possible to complete that study um, in 2022. So we've targeted it for 2023. That study will look at a lot of um, components. Um, 
what density should be accommodated there, what buildings should look like. It'll look at servicing, how, how, how do we uh, service the area with sewer and water to accommodate future development. And it will also look at the heritage aspects, um, inter most likely including a heritage impact assessment for the general area because of the number of heritage resources there to ensure that any long-term future development plan um, ties into the heritage aspects of that area. Next slide, please. Uh, so again, this property, along with 76 mill and 75 Charles are included as one entry in the registry. Um, Mark's presentation went through this registry. Um, this goes through the description of the buildings um, as well. As I indicated, the township has request, received a request, I believe it was February 14th for a demolition permit. And that uh, information was then forwarded on February 15th to Heritage Committee. Um, related to the structures on this property. Uh, for buildings that are not designated, but are included on the registry, as we've indicated, the 60 days notice is required by um, the Ontario, Ontario Heritage Act uh, to ensure that um, the council and municipality can make a decision whether to proceed with designation of the property um, or to allow the demolition to occur. So it's, um, in general, it's, it's one of two options, either proceed to designation or allow the property to be demolished. Um, were the development application under the Planning Act, our official plan provides that that would trigger the requirement for a heritage impact assessment um, with, within section, uh, did write it down, 9.51 of, of our plan um, it would provide. So if, if there was a zoning application, for example, on this property, as part of that review, it would trigger the need for the applicant to prepare a heritage impact assessment. Because it's not a Planning Act application, it's a building code, um, whether it was an application for a building permit or whether it was an application for a demolition, that does not trigger under our official plan the requirement for that heritage impact assessment. But in that light, future develop, excuse me, future development, which would, you know, it will require an official plan amendment, it will require a zoning amendment, um, it would trigger that for a couple of reasons, not only because it abuts St. James Lutheran, which is a designated under part four, but also because it abuts uh, a registry property being the master feed store property abutting it. So um, there's a number of triggers within there. And then to add another layer, which the committee is well aware of within the cultural heritage landscape study, um, this area is one of the candidate um, study candidate areas being reviewed by regional and, and University of Waterloo staff at this time. And so when they come back with their, their recommendations, it is possible that that may add another layer of cultural heritage landscape designation would be a potential for the general area as well to ensure the uh, protection of heritage resources. Um, so again, uh, notice of intention to designate would need to occur within the 60 day period. Um, February 14th was the application. Um, and I believe Andrew's calculated that then because February has 28 days, um, that that would be April 16th, uh, 2022 would be the end of the 60 day window uh, for comment. Next slide, please. So again, this zooms in on the property, highlights the boundaries of, of the subject property, um, uh, shows the silos there in the hatched area that are proposed to be demolished and the large vacant area. Um, you can sort of see where the railway siding used to come through. It went through that tall white structure, as you can see, and then it curved. And I believe it went across the street, if I'm not mistaken, into uh, the raised area in the building that's painted white as well. So there was a couple of loading and unloading spaces. Next slide, please. And then these are just some photos. So that's the area, you can sort of see where the tracks went through this uh, white white area in the foreground and then curved and went into the large door, I believe, at the back in the white building, which is across uh, Charles Street from this property. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, another view of the silos that are proposed to be demolished under this permit request. And I think there's one more slide, perhaps. Um, yeah, just another view of, of the silos again. Um, Uh, I think that's everything. Thanks, Carl. So again, just to summarize, um, the property is identified as being on the non-designated registry. Um, we track any applications related to that registry and the designated registry. Um, 
demolition permit has been applied for. There is no development application currently. There's no um, specific plan that we're aware of in terms of what would be developed on the site. We do know that secondary planning will need to occur in this area once the region completes its municipal comprehensive review. Uh, the demolition permit has been applied for, which triggers uh, under the Building Code Act, which triggers a 60 day uh, window for the township to decide uh, whether it wishes to proceed with designation or whether um, it wishes to allow the uh, demolition of the structures. I'd be happy to answer any questions or help um, in any way that, that you need um, in your deliberations. Can anybody hear me? Mm -hmm. no. My screen has gone completely blank. I don't know what's happened with my computer. We can, can hear, hear you, Mark. We can, we can hear, hear you, Mark. You. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I would open it up for discussion then. Um, I also, Mark, if I can jump in, um, yeah. that the property uh, owner is also on uh, online if there's any questions directly for him, okay. um, that he is available should there be any questions. Howie, um, does is this a, a normal order for this to be in? Is in the sense that they've applied for demolition, and then the development permit, um, which would trigger more study, for that to come after this? Is that is that sort of the normal order? Um, I, I would say in this case probably um, due to the unique nature of the structures that are down on that property. They, they, um, on the Hink Street property, for example, it's a large industrial building with multiple potential uses. So um, retaining that structure in, in this instance, um, my understanding is that um, the property owner uh, would most likely sell it to a developer who would come in with their, their own plans um, and justify their own um, development but but even that would would need to re it would need to wait until the township completes the secondary plan for the area we need to figure out how we're going to service this area it's an older area um the sewer system is not um it's a bit of a spaghetti junction is what we refer to it there's pipes running all over the place in all different directions and uh so coming up with a servicing plan um i don't know the area is quite large it includes you know most of the core area of Baden. it includes what we refer to as the mill district um, and then it also includes uh, the area of the, um, the former Schmidt estate as well, um, which again, depending on the outcomes of um, the MCR, um, you know, obviously development pressures are going to increase. Uh, one thing I think that is very important to recognize is that um, the pressures within the municipal comprehensive review process to focus um, largely on intensification rather than greenfield development. Um, will certainly create um, these kind of discussions on, on many properties probably that are within the registry, the non-designated registry, just because um, the focus then is on um, rebuilding rather than, than expanding. And, you know, there's pros and cons to both, but, but certainly it, it does create some manner of conflict then when redevelopment um, begins to be the focus through intensification. I don't know if that helps your question, but there's no real right or wrong process. Um, uh, in this case, obviously there was previous structures on this property that over the years, um, I think I'd found a air photo from the 1940s that showed sort of all on that siding, there was buildings. And I think, um, you know, over time buildings have been taken down, but the silos are a pretty unique um, sort of one or maybe two, two, um, tasks that they can complete and certainly the removal of the railway siding um, probably limits even even the functionality of those silos from a technical perspective thanks okay thank you very much um tracy can we have a general discussion with the members as to think you still have any questions i think barry's got his hand up mark okay I'm sorry, I can't see my screen. Oh, shoot, that's oh. right. So, okay, okay, Mark, I'll, I, tell, I'm, I can see everybody. Blank. Blank. Okay, so I will let you know uh, with the hands that are up. Sorry about that. Okay. I, th I, think, I think Jen had her hand up first there, Tracy. Okay. Oh, Jen. All right. That's it. Jen. 
Yeah, sorry, my background, I swear. I'm gonna have to paint my wall if we keep going with the Zoom meetings. Um, things. Uh, I'm wondering when looking at that property, the, uh, the there are two newer silos that are, uh, I would struggle to see them being part of a desirable designated feature. Um, is there, and it's a shame that Nick isn't able to be part of this discussion because, you know, his, his expertise, but maybe somebody else has something. Is there any possibility of uh, engaging with the property owner to have a discussion about um, potentially, is, is there a way to save the, uh, the older structure? the older silos um, and not have to destroy all of it. Um, I mean, you know, when I, when I look at what we need in Wilmot Township, we need development in, in areas like this. Um, but we also have to make sure we don't lose things that uh, can't be replaced. And so I don't know if there's some way that it can be... Um, maybe we can get the property owner in touch with some expertise to offer some solutions, some options, um, so that not all of it uh, has to come down. Um, Ren, uh, I'll just, Barry, do you want to go next? Um, or Barry, you've got your hand up. Did somebody want to answer a question or unless Ren, um, okay, sure. Ren. Okay. Um, no, I just wanted to say that it looks like a couple of the silos are stave silos made in sections and the, the, the big pile of them are poured silos. So you could always deconstruct the stave silos and keep the poured ones. And then you could repurpose that into something else instead of, you know, making another parking lot. And which we really don't need any more parking lots there. So just an idea. Um, I can um, I can just jump in along this topic. I've seen um, or Livingston's Mills are different provinces too, and not even just sort of related to this particular business, but just um, silos in general. I've seen um, where they have some different uh, repurposing of it, where they've removed pieces of it and put glass and it became like a, a business office or something, but there definitely is, um, um, is it repurposing or um, yeah, I guess repurposing uh, would be the wording for some structures like this, to at least explore. But um, I think that kind of follows what you were saying, Ren. Like Howie, is are those buildings in good shape or in good repair, or are they about to fall down? Uh, we wouldn't. Development services wouldn't pass judgment on that, Ren. Um, okay. We process the demolition permit. The applicant, I believe, is in the meeting, and and I would expect some of these questions might be better answered by by the applicant. That on any demolition permit, the township staff do not pass judgment on whether it should or shouldn't come down. Um, okay. Our role is to ensure that in this case, because it's such a significant size, it would require an engineer, a professional engineer to design how it would be removed if if the decision of the committee is not to proceed with designation. Yeah, like uh, I understand so that the, they're, they're empty right. right now. Right, so that would be a good question for the applicant, but from a staff perspective, um, they could be brand new last week and we would still need to pr proceed with the demolition permit request and follow okay. the process. Okay. Margaret, you're on. Um, would there be a question um, for the um, property owner? Um, Carl, is he with us? On yes, he is. I, I can enable him to okay. talk. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, just... Sure. Go ahead um, and to talk star six after you've been allowed. All right. So. Can you hear me, everybody? We can definitely hear you. Welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you able to hear um, some of the questions that came up? 
Yes, I did hear some of them. Okay. Um, you are welcome to, um, if you want to give uh, some added um, information, um, you are more than welcome to. Okay. Uh, one comment that was made talked about stave silos coming down. They are not stave silos. They are continuous poured silos. Mm -hmm. They will not come down piece by piece. Uh, other question, you talk about the state of repair of them. When I purchased the property, I am a dairy farmer outside of down on Bleams Road. Uh, I am also a licensed grain dealer. I bought this, this facility to carry on my business. I did a lot of business with Master Feeds over the years, and I was going to continue using them. But it came to the point that they were older, derelict, and there was a lot of work to keep them up to use that I never did have the opportunity of even using them at all. There's just no no point in even trying. Uh, the roofs leaked. The equipment was run down. Um, there is a reason why Master Feed sold and left town. Other than that, any other questions? Uh, I, I agree that there are two newer silos. Um, I would say there's nothing heritage about them. Uh, the older ones, yes, the way they're built, put together. Uh, I can agree with you there, but in attempting to remove the other structures that are not in unison with them, uh, I think it would be very, very difficult. Okay. I am um, not a developer. I was planning on, uh, on selling the property, so I, I have no development eyes to see what I could work in with that facility at all. Okay. Um, Mark, since you can't see your screen, uh, Barry's got his hand up. So Barry, if you'd like to... Uh... Ask. Sure. Um, I had two questions. Um, one, in Waterloo Region or even area-wide, aside from the Livingston, the fact that it's part of the Livingston complex, how unique are these structures? And I don't know if anybody, uh, maybe Barg or Patty or... And secondly, um, in the evaluation sheet, um, there was an, um, the, uh, it says, does this building retain most of its original materials and design features? And the answer was no. And I think Ren and Marg had done the evaluation on it. So I'm just wondering if they could comment more on the evaluation part. Ren, do you remember why we said no? No, I don't. Neither do I. <laughs> no, I don't. I think um, the evaluation, I'm trying to find the evaluation sheet. Sure. Well, you're looking for it, Ren. I got it. I got it. I got it. Because it includes the entire property. In. Yeah. Um, As, oh, as he's reviewing it, um, so the for those that are tuning in, there's a about a five page evaluation um, uh, checklist that the committee goes through to um, to assess on whether or not it meets criteria, and it's a lot of boxes that they would be checking off. So as Ren reads to it, um, it also just to throw it out, it could be uh, where everything else. If you read the the rest of the document, um, talks about the uh, the heritage aspects and value, and it was deemed to add to the register, there is a chance that um, it could have been ticked the wrong box unless Ren and Marg can remember why, but it could be a, an error on that box. I'm really sorry, I don't remember it. I think Marg, maybe we were uh, keying in on the, on the building on the south side of the road. And uh, we looked at silos and thought it's a silo. It's, it's, but it's part of the whole. So we, maybe we didn't give it as much importance as we should have. Yeah, that could be. But, uh, you know, the, the oldest silos are the most noteworthy. The newer, the newer ones like the, that I thought are stave silos, they are, they're, they're, they're noteworthy, but they're not like the original ones. And the original ones would have been there for the rail cars. 
Right. Now, I guess I, um, are they are they as important as uh, the buildings on the uh, south side of the road? For sure they are. Uh, because I, that's part of the, it's, it's like the, you know, the, the, the keystone in a door, you need the one for the other. Right. So. And it is original, you know, so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know any other reason why we would have said no. So perhaps it um, could have been just an error on one of the boxes to tick on. I would look at all the other um, areas that you did <clears throat> tick on, yeah. on being the heritage value and maybe this one, perhaps. Um, Marg, uh, Al has his hand up. Yeah, just wanted to reply to one of Barry's points. Um, the only... Uh, there's a section of silos in St. Jacobs, uh, which have been, which are, and I haven't been in them for a while, but they were incorporated into that one redevelopment. I, I forget what the name of it was, uh, but those are the only silos that I know of uh, that are, have been converted into something else. Cause they're obviously, it's pretty hard to convert. You can't make, I, I don't, it might be possible, but you can't convert a silo into housing. I right? guess <laughs> it's, it's a structure that is not really that you're going to be able to come up with a new new use for easily. Um, so that is that is a bit of a conundrum with what you know with the thing itself. Um, the import, I mean, the, the whole complex itself is important, but the important aspect from my from what I see is, are the buildings on Charles and Mill. Uh, the silos are secondary to that. Um, I don't know what they would ever be able to be used as. Um, and I guess the buildings are under a, uh, under a separate ownership. So, I mean, if, 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 <laughs> if something were to come up with the buildings, then we would have a, have a major dilemma on our hands because one thing I, I do recall when we did the restoration of Castle Kilbride is uh, when we uh, applied to have um, the castle designated a national historic site. Uh, somebody was sent out to do an assessment. It was my job to take that person, A, to write them and request the, uh, the assessment. And then I took that person through the site. And uh, when we climbed up to the top of the Belvedere and I showed her the complex, she immediately noted that it's very rare that you would find the industrial aspect of a business magnet as close to the residence and still intact. So I think that was one of the driving reasons behind why we put it on the desig or the non-designated list. But as for, uh, for the silos themselves, um, I, I don't think they're the key, the key component. And I, I, I'm quite sure the property owner has said that they're, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if they're in derelict or poor condition because they've been empty for so long. And you see more and more silos being taken down simply for the reason uh, on farms because they're not, they're not safe and the older ones aren't being used anymore. So I, I don't think that the silos themselves are worthy of being designated as a heritage structure. If because that's the that's the where we would have to go with this, um, and I, I I just I just don't think that they merit that. So I guess what I'm saying in the long run is is I think that um, as much as I hate to say this, being the heritage advocate that I am, I would I wouldn't be opposed to uh, to uh, granting the demolition permit for these silos, but only for the silos nothing else on the, in that property and nothing else is, is under, under consideration at this point. So that's my comment. Okay. Uh, Jen. So I hear, I hear what Al's saying and I think um, the, like there's, there's, um, there's a bank of silos on both sides of like in, in the larger complex across the road on the south side of the road, as well as this one that's standing alone. Um, 
the and I you know when I look at uh, those buildings and maybe if we can get a, the picture put up again, Please. you know the uh, the way that the original section of uh, silos is built is different than the way that they're built today, um, which is similar to. Uh, yeah, so just yeah. if you go back to the, yeah, that's a, that's, that's, yeah. that's a good one because it shows the silos yeah. across the road as well. So the here you can see now I'm pointing at my screen. That doesn't really help you guys much, does it? <laughs> uh, um, uh, so you the um, the six you know sort of block across the road. Um, May, it retains that same shape and style as the one these ones uh, so that representation would not be lost if these were to come down and you know I've spent some time in that area um, over over the time that I've lived in in the township and this set of buildings is in rough shape um, it's you know It'd be nice to see something good happening in that area. I don't know. Um, if the if we can't if they can't uh, if we were to designate it, we would designate that original block, not the whole um, like the the newer silos wouldn't um, be worth designating would be my my feeling. And because they the other older block is um, represented across the road in the main block, does it warrant keeping all of this um, if it's going to be a hindrance to being able to have some rejuvenation of that area? I don't know. So, um, Patty? Yeah. So the silo with the um, irregular shape there that was in the photograph just back when we're looking at it. So there are two newer silos, concrete port silos, and then the other one is, is not much like the ones across the road, the street, are, is it? The, so the, the, the like, part here with the gray top. That example. isn't a silo. That's what is that building? I'm just silo, looking at it. But it's not a silo. It's, it's, um, and it's, it's not what we're talking about then. It's not part of what, what the, the demolition as uh, application is for. Everything on uh, the right No, it would gone. be everything. Yeah, that's what I thought. It is part of it. Yeah. Well, everything that's in that area. Yeah. So certainly I think that that is a unique building. Um, there was another photograph so showing that from the other. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's that whole thing. Um, see, we're not, we're not, we're saying, we're not actually making the decision this would not come down. We're saying that we don't, we, we're, we have a, you know, there were two choices there that we approve it for demolition or we send it for you know it, it goes to council essentially at that point i think and we you know just do, do a recommendation on it but um i'm certainly not willing at, you know myself to say tonight that 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 whole thing should come down i should have gone and looked at it more than i did um yvonne, yvonne. Yeah, I'm, this is where I'm getting a little confused because we're talking about a demolition permit for a portion of a collection of structures, okay? If we move forward and, and toward for designation, we are talking about the entire collection of structures. Am I right? No, just the silos. But our non-designated list includes all the whole collection of structures as one 
item in our in the non-designated. I can I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused on yeah. where the designation fits in versus the demolition. So the, this is where it's tricky because it's um, um, unaddressed. So the way it is, it's the unaddressed property between 88 Charles and 76 Mills. So that section there, um, how, if you want to add to it. Yeah. Ideally the registry would be modified. There should be a registry entry for each individual property rather than combining three properties with a road running in between them on one. I think that it, that's where the confusion comes from. There are three separate legal entities. Uh, designation would be need to be three separate bylaws registered on three separate properties. So the only property you're actually dealing with is only the demolition that's proposed by the applicant um, of these silos and the associated elevator structure. It, 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 it has no impact. Uh, PV Mart hasn't applied for a demolition and the owner of the store has not applied for a demolition. So it's, it's only the specific property and the, that specific structure, notwithstanding the registry lumps it all in as one. Um, I, I don't know if that helps Yvonne, but, but that's, you know, in, in hindsight and, and perhaps in the next update of the registry, that might be a consideration to, to, um, you know, use the property roll number maybe as the identifier in the absence of a address, but to, to highlight that they're each individual entities. At the, um, in looking at the register, we've got, there's, there, I think there's about five or six roll numbers. So we do have that listed, but maybe we need to review it and um, break it down a bit, but it has all the roll numbers for sure. Um, um, and I wanted to follow up with what Al was saying about, um, I have pictures that I've taken myself um, going up to the Belvedere and pretending I was a Livingston and looking over uh, Baden. And uh, one of the things that immediately drew my eye looking south are those structures. Um, they're really uh, unique and they're a really powerful representation of, of the, um, the linseed oil industry and how Livingston could stand in his Belvedere and, you know, there it is. There is, there's his wealth right there. So they, the, the structures, even if they're in bad shape, they're, they're really representative and they are unique. That, you know, my opinion. And, and I really also think that um, rather than tearing things down and then having a parking lot until the area is evaluated and there are sewers put in and everything else, um, I would far rather see these historic structures there um, and maybe more people will visit the castle and climb up to the Belvedere and have new appreciation for them than having another gravel parking lot. Um, because I know the area will be developed. Um, there's no question there, but um, whether taking them down now is the right order to do it. And that's what Patty was referring to, right? I mean, maybe there is a creative reuse that a repurposing or, or um, you know, rather than just ripping it down because it's the easy, easy way to kind of approach a developer and say, ah, there's nothing on here. You can do whatever you want. So I'm, I'm having some issues here. <laughs> Mark, since you still can't see the, uh, oh, uh, Jen, would you speak? Thanks, Tracy. Sorry, Mark, I hope you figure out the screen thing. Um, question actually for uh, the property owner is, uh, given what um, uh, Director Okrafka said about the MCR um, being required to be completed and this all of these pieces of review being needed to be completed before anything can happen further um what is we don't have a lot of time essentially the clock is ticking we've got uh um one more month and we won't have another heritage meeting before that uh clock runs out um what about 
is, is it something to consider to withdraw the application for the permit um, and give us some time to get some resources um, to you about what could be possible? Um, and then, you know, just to, to maybe have the conversation a little bit more before uh, deciding how to proceed. That would keep the structures uh, standing and um, if no development is going to be possible for a while yet, um, at least a year or two, um, is that something you'd be open to? I guess, can you hear me again? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess my comments are there. I had first applied for a demolition permit back in, uh, well, filled the papers out back in uh, 2014 after I bought the property. Um, I didn't proceed then because the buyer that I was interested then kind of backed out of it. Uh, and so I decided why tear things down and uh, in the meantime, I do have two potential purchasers in the property that I think are well known in the area um, that will do a good job developing the property. And I guess both of them asked for the site to be cleaned before they step up to the plate. Uh, I have done all my environmental studies. I don't think there'll be anything new coming up. I don't expect it. Um, I guess my whole trouble with it is liability with the facility. I've had major, major problems with kids getting in there and out of there. Uh, the one neighbor there is good. She calls me when there's somebody there. I called the police on the matter. They really don't seem to want to help me. I've had pictures of the kids uh, by a trail cam and I've been told we can't confront them until we catch them in the act. Gotten to the point, uh, they told me that if they get, if I call them once more, they're going to report me to the bylaw department of the township to board the place up properly. So I've took uh, big cement blocks, uh, going with the tractor and loader to lift them in front of the doors. So any spot that they can get in, um, it is a, a potential liability aspect in there. And I'm not sure how much longer I want to wait. I'd rather get it down, cleaned up so we can get a proper developer in there looking to get their plans in place. Um, no matter what developer comes in, I do know it's going to be a year or more anyways until they can get their plans in there. I'll use the word, get their act together and know exactly what they're doing. Um, is there anyone else that has questions? Just looking for you, Mark. Okay. Uh, Mark, no one else has their hands uh, okay. Would this be the time then to ask for a motion on this? If there are no further questions, um, that would be a good time to ask for a motion. Okay, that's and what I'm doing then. Somebody. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Mark. And I was just gonna uh, just remind uh, some of the members, there's an email that was sent early to, um, uh, to guide you with the motion. Can you read that, Tracy? Um, certainly. Um, so depending on how the committee would like to decide with the, with the decision, there are, there are two options. Uh, one would be, I'm sure it wasn't time. I thought I was on mute for a moment. <laughs> um, the, the first option would be the Heritage Wilmot Advisory Committee has received the demolition permit application for the unaddressed property between 88 Charles Street and 76 Mill Street in Baden and has no further comments. The second option would be that the Heritage Wilmot Advisory Committee recommends to Wilmot Council that the clerk and director curator proceed with the designation process of the unaddressed property between 88 Charles Street and 76 Mill Street in Badens in accordance with the Ontario Heritage Act. All right, would any member of the committee then be willing to uh, make either one of those motions so that we can discuss them and then vote on them? But I suggest a third motion, which brings Jen's um, idea in here, which is it probably it's probably unworkable. Um, Jen, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking uh, to uh, to promote for for uh, to to um, move it along for designation 
unless it would be withdrawn and then uh, unless the demolition request would be withdrawn, it would be a, a, a third potential motion. Anyway. I would second that motion. So, um, Patty, did you want to repeat that motion? Just yeah, so, so I, yeah. I would move that, um, sorry, I, I would get the uh, part of what you had there and I just can't find it here fast enough, but the, um, hold on. If you look at the option one or two, then maybe use that too. Yeah, and I can't, I can't see it. What am I looking at here? Oh, sorry, here we go. Okay. Yes, so, so option two, um, I, I would move option two with the uh, uh, adding to that unless it would be withdrawn, uh, unless the request would be withdrawn. The request for demolition permit would be withdrawn at this so you, time. So Patty- It kind of just moves it down the road, but it gives us some more time to, to uh, to take a better look at it. I feel I should have gone down and looked at it more and I didn't and uh, I'm kind of. The uh, Patty, just, mm -hmm. um, just to clarify. So once the demolition application, um, once the, sorry, once the uh, designation process begins, the demolition application would be voided. Oh, I see what, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. But it's still an unless, I mean, if, if um, if the applicant chose to uh, to withdraw it at this time, withdraw the request at this time, then that would take priority, would it not? And then and then it is not um, is not coming in front of council until until it would be asked for again, which presumably would happen at some point. But essentially, what what it would say is that you know. We want to have the conversation a little bit more thoroughly and think of have a little bit more time. And I understand that, you know, uh, from the property owner's perspective, you know, it's been, he's been sort of waiting for a while. Um, and this is, you know, but we only have a month. Um, and if he is willing to withdraw the application, which he can reapply for, um, but that gives us a little bit more time to potentially offer some uh, expertise and see if, you know, and for the committee to have a little bit uh, more thorough a look at the structure and weigh the options and consider the fact that um, there is a, a, a smaller version, but almost identical structure contained in the property on the south side of the road. Um, and, and, you know, then we can bring this back at the April meeting and uh, reconsider the conversation. Um, yeah. Um, I just think, Mark, if, um, is, is there anyone else? I mean, if we're starting to go down this path. Sorry, I else? kind of kind of threw a wrench in the works there. I'm sorry. Um, okay. if, um, if is there anyone ask, else? Have, yeah. I believe it's, it's my understanding that Mr. Snyder is not willing to delay this any longer. Am I correct about that? I guess, first of all, my name's Stuart. I, I know it's Mr. Snyder, but I'd rather you call me Stuart. Okay. Um, I guess my preference is not to delay it any longer. I have a potential purchaser that will rejuvenate Baden. And I guess at this point, till I tell him take a hike, I might be years before I find somebody willing to stay, stick some more money into downtown Baden. Uh, my yes. preference is to carry, carry on if I can. Right, I understand your position. Yes, thank you for clarifying that. Um, there's a motion on the floor. I think it should be repeated so that we all know what it is. And then we'll have to, uh, did we have a seconder for that? 
Could you repeat the motion, uh, um, Tracy? Have you got it written down there? I do. Um, is this, are you referring to the original one that I read or the revised one that Patty had suggested at the end? Which motion is on the floor? I'm sorry, but I'm confused yeah. at the moment. Option three is on the floor. <laughs> that's what, right. yeah. So there that's, was the- That's Patty's yeah. motion. Yeah, yeah, so the 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 option was the the first one where the, the committee essentially would uh, say they received the permit um, and has no further comments. Option two is that the committee um, is recommending uh, to Wilmot Council that the clerk and director curator proceed with designation um, of the property. And option three <laughs> would be that the um, committee um, uh, request for demolition it's withdrawn. Patty, you're just a little bit unclear at the end of that one. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. And if, if um, it, it doesn't sound like that one's going to work anyway, so I would move um, option two. Okay, is there a seconder for option two? That's the one to proceed with to recommend designation. Is that right, Tracy? That is correct. It would be okay. Is there a, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry I'll no, second no. it. I'm sorry, Yvonne, did you second it? I said I would second it. Okay. okay. Any more discussion or questions before I call the question? Oh, all uh, those. In nope, so uh, Al's got his hand up. Um, Al? Yeah, um, I'm gonna speak against this because I don't think they're worthy of designation and I think it's going to be objected to anyway. Um, they're concrete silos, although they are part of the complex, as Jen has pointed out, there are other silos in the other portion of the building, which would have served a similar purpose in the production of linseed oil at the facility. So um, I was speaking against it and I would encourage people to vote against the motion. And then I would propose a sub subsequent motion if this were defeated. Okay, any other questions then or comments about the motion? All right. I would then ask you to uh, vote in favor of the motion or against. All those in favor, if you could put your hands up while Tracy does a count. How many little squares are there? <laughs> Are you okay. able to see? Yes. So six in favor and opposed then? Two opposed. Okay. Then the motion carries. Yeah. And also, Mark, just to remind yourself, you were able to vote. <laughs> yeah, I would be in favor. So just to correct, so would be seven. If we add Marg, it would be seven in favor, two opposed. Okay. Still carried. Thanks. Anything further on this then? I thought, thank you everybody who, who participated and had comments and to the presentation and so on to Harold and Stuart for being with us. Thank you. And Mark, whenever you're ready to pass it back to the Yes, chair, I'd be Susan. ready to pass it back to Nick. Hello again, everybody. Um, all right, uh, moving back to our agenda, there was not a whole lot left. Um, we had, we we're at uh, item seven, which would be correspondence. I, I did not have any correspondence. I don't know if anyone else did. All right. And then uh, number eight was just round table or info sharing. We should just combine seven and eight. So we have one, one item for <laughs> all info sharing. Uh, Al, I see your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to share that I did, I just this afternoon, finally found that document that I was looking for uh, that was uh, photocopies from a book written by Gottlieb Betchen in 1910. 
but unfortunately have not been able to find a date of construction in that book that he's written for the house. Um, now I've been scanning through it very quickly and I don't have the whole book. I just have certain sections of it uh, documented. And Gottlieb Betchen is the, uh, he lived on the farm and then his daughter and the Hallmans took it over um, and they lived on the farm. And then it was sold to the Ryers and then it was sold to uh, Karen. So uh, the conundrum as to what is the actual <laughs> construction date on the house is not solved by what I've been able to find. And this book that I looked at uh, years ago used to be in the New Dundee Library and it's no longer there. So I don't know where you'd find a copy um, to, uh, to look at the whole book. As I said, I don't have the whole book. Uh, I just, I made photocopies of sections of it because I was looking for material on our house. I, there's a lot of interesting material in what I've got here, but just not the piece of information that we're looking for. So I'll look through it some more, but I don't think it's in there, at least not in, in what I have. Okay. Uh, and well, I don't know, I, I don't know if you can find, I don't know if you can find a copy, if we can find a copy of that book somewhere or not, because it was published in 1910. I, th I think, Al, the book you're talking about I recall that the property owner actually has a copy of it because I know when back in 2012 or 13 or whenever it was that we were talking about her windows, she had an old book and I, it may be the one that you're talking about. So maybe okay. we could even reach out to her and see if she has it. Yeah. And was it just the title of the, the property? Hal, or what was the title of the book? Oh, no, it's the, the title of the book is... Um... It's specific to that property, right? Genealogical, biographical, and pictorial history of the Betchen family and its connections. And it was built, property was settled by Jacob Betchen, who okay. was Wilmot Township's first reeve. And then his son Gottlieb uh, took over the farm when Jacob passed away in 1869. And I'm not sure when it switched over to the Hallmans, because, uh, was it Hallman? Yeah, Hallman, who married one of uh, Gottlieb Betchen's daughters. Uh, it would have been sometime around. 1910, because uh, Gottlieb Betchen moved to New Dundee and lived in the house that's on the corner of Front and Main. It's still there today. And Gottlieb Betchen also built the uh, Jubilee Block, which is the Emporium. Um, so uh, lots of information about building the Emporium, lots of information about a bunch of other stuff, but no mention of when the house was built. Mention of the two houses that were there before this house that's there now. Um, so, yeah. It's kind of kind of interesting, but it might be in, in, in some like we should ask Karen if she has it and then yeah. Um yeah, I know she showed me a book, but I can't recall what it was now. But it was a it, like a smaller it would have book. A black, it would have a black cover. I remember recalling it having a black cover, but it used to be at the New Dundee Library, so I don't know where it went. It's not there anymore. Maybe hmm. maybe it got moved to library headquarters. Yvonne's putting her hand up. <laughs> she might know where it may be. Because yes, because New Dundee Branch is part of the region of Waterloo Library. If there was anything of historical significance that was uncatalogued on those shelves, was it uncatalogued? Probably. Um, there's a good chance it, it either went to headquarters or uh, one of the larger branches. New Hamburg um, had a file of uncatalogued historical um resources. So that is something to consider. I can approach them and see if there's anything. Because um, I think my it's actually my writing still on the drawers that may contain <laughs> uh, those documents, or it may have been passed on to the regional archives, if it had um, historical significance. If you could find that out, let me know. I was gonna say if it's uh to the archives, I can absolutely. Uh, um, if you connect. can follow up with the archives, I'll follow up with the New Hamburg branch. How would that Ab be? Absolutely. Okay. What about following up with the Grace? Not, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll call Karen. Karen. <laughs> okay. We could look at the Grace Schmidt room at the Kitchener Public Library. They may have a copy. Well, that sounds like a good lead. <laughs> So hopefully we can find something out there. We'll probably have like three copies found. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Maybe it's been reprinted too. 
as oh, a these best sellers I, always I get at the region. These best sellers always get reprinted. Um, and just don't go in and say, I'm looking for a book with a black cover because everyone will run away when you ask that. <laughs> But it has a black cover, I distinctly remember, and it's a large print book. So anyway, that, okay. that's my update. Excellent. Thank you. So. Anything else, anyone? Uh, seeing none, so last item, uh, just our next meeting is going to be April 13th. We'll do 6.30 again. I don't know, Tracy, if there's a possible in-person meeting happening, but I guess we'll see. I'll let everybody know um, if there's any change, obviously, beforehand. At least we know the date and time. Yeah. All right, then uh, motion to adjourn. Al, you win. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone. Good night, everybody. Uh, thanks. Have a good night, everybody.